Hello, Ben. Uh, hello, YouTube. This is Ben Gessel. Uh, um, uh, I'm going to be making a few more videos um, regarding um, kind of imaginative ideas uh, last night. Um, I mentioned a while back that um, I'm very inspired by um, often unconventional plot uh, or story arc, um, uh, unconventional ideas in, in fantasy adventure and other kind of similar stories. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily unconventional or, or totally original ideas, but but there are many um, ideas I think that um, I find can be refreshing, but not for the sake of being completely original. Just um, the kinds of sort some of the things that kind of expand your um, um, kind of feed your imagination, I guess you could say. Um, offer you another avenues that you could go um, with um, whatever, you know, um, story arcs or anything um, creative. But these are some ideas and ideas that I have um, that um, I think, again, could still be used in the future in fantasy fiction video games. Some, uh, again, if they're more substantial, I just ask that you talk to me if you've ever used them first. Talk to me, please talk to me and be courteous about that. So, um, but I mentioned, you know, Alice in Wonderland is a good example of uh, something more unconventional because, um, and I'll explain to you a bit more why. Um, I probably need to do a video just on Alice in Wonderland um, one of these days, but, uh, uh, or Willy Wonka, that sort of thing. So, uh, but, um, so, um, some of these ideas might seem a little silly, but it just gives you an idea of what maybe hasn't really been done as much yet. Um, let's just say that the main character is an ingredient in a stew, that they they're not, they're not aware that they're actually um, a potato or something. <laughs> and um, if there's some, so that the main character is talking to carrots and turnips, just like it's their real life. But they're in this kind of watery world and not really sure what's going on. But, but everything around them gets getting hotter and hotter. Um, do they end up dying in the, in the stew or do they? What, what happens? So it's kind of a basic idea, but um, something, you get something you write about for kids. but. Anyway, I, I haven't really, I don't know, it's, you know, there's poetry about that kind of thing, but, um, so there's a lot of, you know, if you really can't read a story that, that, uh, sounds like, uh, or kind of goes along like a dream actually would, um, like from idea to idea, just unrelated things, um, that kind of works overall in kind of a subconscious way, that would be remarkable. Um, in my opinion, there's not. I, I haven't really read anything that follows kind of like a dream, you know, that we would have kind of thing. But it really, really would be remarkable to do something like that. Um, so uh, you know, there's regarding characters um, and just kind of, you know, um, just uh, brainstorming different kinds of characters. Um, I think I've done this. I'm gonna have probably other videos like this in the future. At this, but uh, you can have more characters that are unpredictable in different respects, uh, or that have odd fears or worries, or you know, you, the main character does something that you know makes the like a certain character very afraid or timid, or you know, the character isn't really sure what they're doing, and so you know, those little, those kind of ultra sensitive uh, types of characters, or you can have some characters in the story that just habitually or on a whim betray trust for no apparent reason. Uh, you know, just very unpredictable and very sometimes not not loyal or not um, you know whatever. There are some, some faults there, but um, you can also have characters that make sort of expressions that are very kind of hard to understand. So you see, you have a giant bee in a story, and the giant bee makes a facial expression. Maybe their eyes are X'd, you know, instead of like having eyes or they're, they're closed, but there's kind of X there. And it made the the facial expression is a mixture of frustration, feeling kind of sick, and a, and a fear, kind of face expression of fear. Well, maybe the main character might 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 um, read that as being be as angry or aggressive, but the bee is in fact just feeling not not good. So um, you know that kind of thing. Uh, you know, the choice of giant bee in itself is frightening. So if you have the giant bee, a, a more of a kinder character, benevolent character. That can be kind of semi-original. I haven't seen too many characters like that in fiction that um, would be kind of like this kind of character. 
Not too many. Um, you know, you could have um, characters that turn out to be shapeshifters. There's been more than one character in the story. That's that's been done before, but you can still do more of that. Characters with odd, peculiar, or fixated interests. Uh, <laughs> so you have someone who's just working on a house or building a house, but they just keep pounding in nails, even if the house is already built or it's already pretty sturdy. You tell them, okay, this is done. No, 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 I need more nails, more, more nails. <laughs> you know, kind of stuff like that. You know, so uh, maybe maybe you have a character that is the hammer, and the nails are like, you know, little guys that just are very basic emotions, like hey, they say hey, yes or no kind of thing. Uh, so um, giant relaxed grasshoppers and praying mantises, you know, 20 foot tall guys that, you know, are really skinny, and uh, they're playing guitar, and they're just really relaxed, you know. I'm not gonna eat anyone. Um, insect comedians, you know, can be kind of funny, you know. Um, overweight, over the hill grandpa teddy bears. So you already get the idea of we already know about Winnie the Pooh. Well, just have Winnie the Pooh as uh, a 60, 50, 60 year old, older guy maybe. Uh, not too old, but maybe. But um, instead of just honey, maybe they're you know, or sweets. Maybe they're fond of uh, you know, other things, bread or something, and. and um, <laughs> and they're a little bit grumpy sometimes and really, really, maybe morbidly obese or something. Um, <laughs> or maybe they're just getting out of hibernation so a little bit grumpy. Uh, you know, you, have, you can have ants driving cars or ant traffic. You see these, like, different kinds of ants, some of them are more dangerous, and they go in a straight line. Or just have, like, a area where there's a city of ants. And, um, you know, what would that be like? You know, <laughs> make way, you know. Uh, especially if you shrink like in Alice Wonderland, it might be interesting. Uh, and you have different kinds of insects, you know, involved, things like that. Um, there's a movie called Ants, you know, it's, it's done a little bit, but not really. Not the car thing. Uh, so lemons, cranberries, limes, peppers, onions, kind of shooting um, acidic, uh, the juice is that similar. So something kind of, like, it hurts or it stings a little bit, like something acidic. So like characters are like, like um, Produce that have you know personalities and some of them uh, use the maybe some of their tart or acidic acidic uh, whatever types of juices or to you know <laughs> as a projectile so those kinds of characters that's a more more basic idea but. okay going on here uh, you can have a, a huge battle or a fight at the very beginning of the story except a movie video game whatever um, but the rest of the story involves the recovery of all people involved in that. Uh, and I thought it's maybe been done a little bit before, but um, if you do it right, it can be uh, maybe main character stumbles upon. Maybe it's not my favorite idea, but it's it's a little different. Um, anyway, plots involving use of chemicals, mind altering substances, etc., things like mushrooms, sort of that that alter a main character's perception of the world and of other characters, and the reader will feel much more confused and helpless at times. This is, I think, something that still isn't quite done full justice to. Um, you know, very air that, can, that a character could breathe uh, could be could have uh, other substances that would cause them to feel lightheaded or you know perceive things differently or dizzy or uh, you know they don't really uh, they can't really tell how far away certain things are certain voices sound higher or lower you know all kinds of stuff. Um, so you know that can really affect uh, the story. I think because you, you know, if you're if you're just if you're um, if you're not looking at something from a, a mission point of view, if you're looking at something from a, from a first person, uh, that can be yeah, <laughs> interesting. Um, gateways in certain areas with which 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 yeah, uh, through each gateway or each door, or whatever portal, uh, whatever having certain basic symbols such as a, you know, just an apple, grapes, a mirror. Uh, but each of the, the some of these uh, these ideas or images will greatly influence the nature of that area. Um, so you know, it's up to the you know the writer what they are, what the symbols are, and how they all relate to a, be a central idea in the story. But of course, the multiple choice thing it's best left to a video game, uh, or choose your, choose your adventure book, or something like that. But um, one of the things that we like about video games is that choice we have that you know. Um, but you know, there's something that we can do more with that idea. I think um, it doesn't have to always be about monsters or something combat related. It can be other things, and so when it's other things, I think we really enjoy that kind of thing a lot too. Um, 
So you don't have to have a major good or evil conflict in many imaginative or fantasy stories. You don't have to. You don't, it doesn't. Know, isn't always needed. Not really. Just their character or characters that trying to understand the world that they're in um, um, better, and the, or its inhabitants, what's expected of them, or how other other characters see them. Um, understanding the world, the universe in general, or better from being in this other world. Uh, maybe trying to foresee potentially dangerous dangerous situations. Uh, Alice in Wonderland, for instance, doesn't need a Jabberwocky. It didn't need a Jabberwocky. It was just Jabberwocky was superfluous. Uh, it didn't need the Red Queen. Um, it already has Cheshire Cat, Mad, Mad Hatter, all the mushrooms and all the weird plants and everything, flowers. Uh, it has the caterpillar. It has the Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Um, all kinds of things all involving this weird world. And the essential idea being Alice needing to wake up and essentially or get home. So because the you know, it was all about her trying to find the right rabbit, that the right rabbit kept leading, keeps leading her to all these other places and the whole idea is, you know, after she finds the white rabbit and satisfies her curiosity that way about the white rabbit, she's gonna wake up and go home. It that you don't need anything evil necessarily. Um you can throw those things in, but they're kind of incidental, really. It's an afterthought. Um, anyway, you can try... This is one of the things... That, getting some of these other ideas. Some of these I think I value, value it a little bit more. So the main character is trying to get somewhere. And they keep coming back to where they were for some reason. No matter which way they go. Uh, there's a fair, faint air of, uh, of maybe witchcraft or evil magic or oddness about some characters. But um, you can't really put your finger on it. But what it is. Uh, meet characters that are trapped in there. As well, uh, kind of a maybe you have a little club of like say lost boys, or some girls in there. Um, so that can be that can be a really good idea. Um, yeah. So and then um, you know just you know characters in general that kind of mumble a lot and maybe you feel sorry for them, but they're not always very their their mannerisms aren't always very clear if they're a good character or they're not as good, um, you know. So um, you know, I thought the Lego movie was actually kind of uh, had a, had a different idea in this regard, which I thought was really interesting. That you know, it turns out that this world that you're you're you've seen is the creation of a boy, and the boy uh, is a bit upset with his dad, uh, or at least wants to spend more time with his dad. And his dad is a perfectionist. In that Lego sense, and so the dad realizes what's going on and changes his ways. I thought that was a great movie. That was a great movie idea. I, think, I still think it's one of the best movies that's come out in a while, in a, in a way. I mean, there's Up. I mean, especially more for the family type movies. But, but um, to keep going with that idea, you can still try, you know, ha having other kids, teenagers even, with, you know, if the teenagers are into that kind of thing. You can have a SimCity idea, maybe, or something like that. It doesn't have to be toys, but, but um, you know... Lincoln Logs or Block type areas. You can have a toy. This was toy trains are more elaborate, with much more elaborate um, uh, model, you know, um, surroundings. Um, you know, in a big, so a huge estate. You can have a rich boy who's made this huge world, and you can have a character in this world, and that kind of thing. So you can sell. You can sell all kinds of things. Um, maybe uh, something kind of claymation ish. It's a little bit. Uh, be sinister, perhaps I don't know, a little different. I'm not really sure who made this world, or if even if it's a creation of someone, you know, you're just trying to understand the world better. Um, can you have a story, of course. This is something I thought about in the past. A story where the parents of a kid uh, enter a world that was created by their son or daughter, probably most likely son, maybe, uh, and discover all the things that their son never talked to them about. That's in this world. Uh, but he's put it there for various reasons. Um, things they dismissed or didn't have time to listen to him about regarding. Um, and so parents are, you know, very moved by everything. I think they can do a lot more with this idea. I, mean, I really, really do. I really do. Um, uh, so, you know, kids confronting evil entities that haunt them in their dreams. This is kind of like, you might think this is kind of like it. One of the ideas of, you know, Stephen King's Pennywise or, you know, it story but you know if you have kids on their own trying to understand or confront or deal with really, really evil characters uh, with the intelligence and 
member of an adult type or you know someone who's very much a diabolical character. It doesn't have to be an evil clown, but something, some character who masquerades as someone who is um, appears to adults as hardworking, respectable, etc. But only the kids know that this guy is, this, this these characters or characters are really really bad. And these characters are able to um, get in their dreams and haunt them in their sleep. I mean, I'm talking really 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 bad stuff. Um, so you, you know, characters, the kids enter these dark worlds. This is more of a you know maybe kind of a horror idea, but. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with this idea. Um, you can have characters that aren't necessarily evil, but they're trying. They, maybe they're able to help, help out the kids somehow, or they're, they're uh, maybe somewhat neutral. But again, they appear to parents as regular people, but they have these other qualities with them where they're able to. You know, so, um, if uh, just trying to survive a gang attack in real life, this is more of a maybe real life thriller, you know. Type, uh, sort of action type story or movie. So kids trying, you, you, so the main character is trying to survive a gang attack or a bunch of people trying to, to you know, hurt them or kill them. Um, so this person is evading them, let's say in an urban environment. Um, he's cap this, this, in particular, this person is capable of actually seriously hurting these gang members or killing them. Um, but he doesn't. Maybe he's non nonviolent. Uh, maybe he just doesn't want any trouble. Um, he'd rather try to just leave them. Uh, he doesn't, have, and of course he's trying to contact the police, but he can't for some reason. Whether his cell phone gets damaged or all the phones, he doesn't have. You know, by the time he gets to a, a, a phone, he tries to enter a business, and the gang has no respect for anybody in that business, and so he's always on the run. This kind of situation, you know, maybe it's been done before, but I think it, there's still more ideas that can be explored here. Um, just getting back to some of these other aspects, I you know I'll link more story, more movies, and videos uh, need for you but you know, for YouTube about this subject. But um, um, you know as we are, we live in an era of, of um, remakes and the same stories told over and over and over again. We really need I know we need new stuff. We need new ideas. We need uh, you know we need to support um, efforts made to go new directions. Um, just I would encourage y'all you, you all to think about this very seriously um, yeah I mean there's a lot more that hasn't been done yet and we just you know we need to keep being advocates for new stuff new stuff original stuff that's we want actually it's interesting we, 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 we'd like um, alright um, I'll catch you guys later